Labadiena visiems. Hello everyone, I'm Arturas Piliponis, UPI partner. I'm so pleased to be here today with you. And if you allow me, I will continue in English. Because there are many concepts, definitions, and I don't want uh, to be scattered. And I think the first speaker did the same, respecting of being a Lithuanian. Uh, so the topic I'm going to discuss in more detail. Digitalization of logistics. And, uh, and I, will not, uh, I will not be talking about uh, the current uh, activities. I'll try to look a little bit into the future, what is to come. But before we do that, we need to understand what is happening now. And uh, if to look what is happening in Europe, uh, and around in the countries, uh, there are many developments, digitalizing the waybills and other uh, related uh, freight-related documents on the national level. Uh, there are different pilots which uh, try to do that on the cross-border level. And uh, the main uh, initiative which EU is, has put forward is FT. It was mentioned before. And... Uh, the principle of FT is very simple. When you want to ship the goods, you register the data in certified platform, and uh, you get unique shipment ID, which is then used across the journey of the cargo, and uh, it, data is enriched uh, moving from one phase of the um, journey to the next. Uh, it saves a lot of... Um, uh, resources, both administrative and business. It saves a lot of trees. Uh, EU has uh, done a study. So per year, uh, from EU alone, the savings of paper or the trees uh, are equivalent to uh, almost uh, 500,000 trees, which is equivalent to almost uh, 100,000 of paper boxes. Yeah? and equivalent to like four Labrador, uh, Labonoro forests. Yeah? So that's quite impactful. Uh, and uh, for the purpose of my uh, uh, speech, let's, take, let's consider that this FT regulation is a done deal. Despite the fact it will happen in 2025, it's moving ahead. I was told that some Someone said it's moving very slowly, but that's uh, what is happening in Europe. Uh, things are moving slowly but surely forward. Yeah? So it's the deal. The data in Europe will be exchanged not as electronic documents, it will be exchanged as a data sets from 2025. Uh, but then thinking, what does that mean for cross-border trade, for cross-border logistics? We need to understand what is happening in other countries around us, and we as EY, we are involved in uh, projects in uh, uh, quite a few regions around Western Balkans, who are currently working on uh, shaping their tra digital transformation agenda in the trade and logistic area to align with the developments in EU. Uh, we are working in Eastern partner countries, including Ukraine and the countries around, helping them to deliver the agenda of digitalization. And uh, I'd like to mention as an example to you a few projects uh, that are happening. Uh, so we, for example, uh, we implemented uh, this spring uh, the solution called SEED. I'm not sure if you've heard of it, but this, this solution is used in Western Balkans to exchange the data between the customs of different uh, Western Balkan countries. Yeah? So we implemented the seed to exchange the data between Moldova and Romania. And uh, why I'm telling you that, it's a very, very important step. Because before this step, EU was not exchanging the data with the external countries, with their partners. Never before. Yeah? So it's kind of breaking of the barrier. And um, this seed solution as a next step will be taken by Moldova to the greater scale. The EU is taking a similar approach to the EU blue line, which connects uh, Albania, Montenegro, and Italy to implement de facto, and the like. 
uh, one another project to mention is uh, the project which is happening in uh, Ukraine. It's called ETTN. Uh, it's a uh, very similar principle to FT. It's digitalization of way bills. Again, to get to register in the platform, get unified ID, and use it across all the economic operators and competent institutions in, on the journey of the cargo. And uh, so these are our neighbors uh, looking a bit far away, looking at UK. UK, as we speak, is running a pilot uh, to exchange the data with the third country. And uh, the country they chose, if I'm not mistaken, is Kenya. And they are running the project called uh, Trade Logistic Information Pipeline, which basically allows them to receive all the information about consignment before it leaves the country of origin, yeah? and vice versa. This is a pilot, but this is shows the direction where the digitalization of trade and logistics is moving. And the last point on, on uh, this topic is the United Nations efforts. Who has heard of the multimodal transport reference data model? Probably not many. This is the model. This is the data model uh, United Nations put as a part of their uh, family of standards, which could be used to exchange the data, the data, not documents, the data among different organizations, players, and the countries. Yeah? And they are promoting this. And all of this uh, could be concluded that um, in order to realize cross-border logistics, you need several elements. You need, of course, technology. You need the uh, data model, but you need security. You need uh, data privacy. You need trust. And trust is probably the most important of all, because without trust, all these transactions cannot happen. And from EU perspective, if you think about the future of digitalization, EU will not connect with the third countries unless they play by EU rules in the privacy, in the security, and other related domains. Yeah? And uh, the things I'm talking about will be happening probably from now till 2028. But if you are in this field, if you are if your business in these countries, if you are a government institution representative, it's very good to know because you can start aligning your uh, policies, activities uh, based on these uh, developments. And now, um, getting back to uh, Europe uh, initiatives and FT, um, it's, it is European initiative, FT regulation. Customs is not part of it. So the customs is a very, very important player in anything cross-border. It is not part of it now. But the discussion uh, is ongoing in parallel that next to the European uh, FT platforms, there probably could be some other countries' FT platforms or the FT gates to be able to exchange the data. Yeah? And uh, to conclude my message, I have a few points uh, to share. So first, the digitalization is moving ahead no matter what. So it will happen. The fact is that FT initiative will spill over to uh, outside, countries outside the EU. Yeah? That's for fact as well. Uh, I think the logical, it is logical to think that the candidate countries, Moldova, Ukraine, could be the first to get uh, to be accepted to the pool, subject they arrange their uh, legislation based on EU equities. Yeah? Uh, the fact is that the customs, currently not being the actor in the game, 
will be a very important actor. And, uh, and this will require, all of this to happen will require for different transport modes to come together. Today we, ha we listen to the speakers of uh, uh, representatives of the different transport modes. They refer to themselves as uh, competitors or partners, but to make uh, multimodal uh, logistic digitalization happen, they have to come together. They have to work as uh, one team. Yeah? And, um, and probably uh, uh, the last point uh, to mention that when we think about a bit further connection, uh, not just EU, EU neighbors, uh, but a bit further, the United Nations initiatives and standards will be playing important role. So that is my message. I do accept that some of the information could be a bit far away from what you are doing on a daily basis, but that was the ask of organizers to give a bit more of a perspective uh, what is to come and not just what is happening now. Thank you uh, for listening and happy to discuss if you have any uh, questions in, the, in this topic.